Welcome to Cards by Kendra and the Team Tiny Summer Hop. This is a video hop put on by the Team Tiny group on Facebook. We are a group of crafters who come together each month to provide videos that are ad free on YouTube because we all have less than 1,000 subscribers. Now I am sponsoring this hop. I'll be giving away two prize packs to two lucky winners. They'll be receiving the Summer Dots and Stripes paper pad by Echo Park as well as a mystery stamp set. To enter to win, fill out the form that I've linked in the description box below. The deadline for entering is Saturday, June 5th, and the winner will be announced on my YouTube channel shortly after. Now make sure you check out the other videos in the hop by clicking on the hashtag Team Tiny Summer Hop, which is also located in the description box. To tell you a little bit about my quarterly card challenge, it's designed to be used with 6x6 pattern paper, and you can make 15 cards using just 6 sheets. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love pattern paper, but I have a hard time using it up. And so this is a great way to make a bunch of coordinating cards at the same time and use up what you have in your stash. It's not company specific, so you can use whatever paper, stamps, embellishments, and anything else you may have to decorate your cards. Now, I have a free PDF on my website that you can download that gives you cutting templates for each of the six sheets of paper. Plus, there are 14 card sketches which are color coded so you can tell which piece goes with what. Once you create your cards, post your pictures of your creations on social media and use the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 2 and you can enter to win one of three amazing prizes. Now for more details, visit my website at cardsbykendra.com. I'll also be linking the challenge down below in the description box as well. Now, if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Now let's talk about the card I'm making for this month's summer theme. I decided to create a slimline shaker card using Queen & Company's Beach Bound Kit. Now this kit makes it super easy to make shaker cards. It comes with these adorable summer themed pre-cut shaker foam pieces in a sandcastle, a bucket, a surfboard, some swimsuits, and a little sun. The kit comes with dyes, acetate, and some toppings that match the paper pad. Now for this card, I'm using one of the sheets of paper from the paper pad with the waves on it, along with some colored card stock that I had in my stash to create the scene. I'm also using the Honey Bee Stamps Sandy Shores stamp set to create the sandy look for the sand and the sand castle. Now I will put a list of all of the supplies I'm using on today's card in the description box below in case you're interested. So let's get started. I have two different shades of tan colored cardstock and the darker shade is going to be what I create the sandcastle with. Now, because a sandcastle is normally wet, it should be slightly darker than the sand. I've placed the Sandy Shores background stamp directly on my Misty stamping platform, and I'm inking up just the right-hand side of the stamp with some Simon Hurley ink in Gur, which I think is a funny name for a color, but it's a light brown color. And I know that this is kind of backwards, but I didn't want to peel off the stamp from the acetate. And I just wanted to use the plate to be able to apply some pressure on the back of the cardstock. I didn't need to do the whole strip of that darker piece since I'll be using the die on it to cut out the sandcastle. But for the lighter strip, I'm going to have to do this in sections. Now, I accidentally overlapped the dots a little too much, but I'll be able to cover that up with my shaker pieces once we assemble the card later. Now I'm taking the sandcastle die and cutting it from the darker shade of cardstock and I'm going to run this through my Big Shot die cutting machine. I'm also cutting out the bucket from a piece of red scrap cardstock and I ended up cutting out a yellow shovel off camera as well. Now I'm taking the pattern paper with the waves and I'm cutting it down to one inch strips. Now since my pattern paper is only six inches wide and I need eight and a quarter inches, I'm going to have to piece the strips together but I'll be able to hide the seam with the sandcastle. To give it a little more interest, I used the Slimline Waves die to cut across the top of those glued together strips to make waves, and I also cut out some clouds. I'm using a piece of lightweight white cardstock to build my scene on, and so I just cut those clouds out of a piece of light blue cardstock so that the white would show at the top. I'm using some Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to glue everything down. And once I have all these glued down, I'm gonna be using the Whimsy Stamps Card Builder dies to give it a stitched edge. And this way it'll cut off any pieces of my strips that were hanging off the side. 
Now to assemble the sandcastle. Both sides of the foam piece have adhesives. So for now, I'm just removing the top side and I've attached the clear acetate sheet on top and then I've glued the down, glued the frame down using some Nuvo glue on top of the acetate. Now I'll adhere this to the card in just a little bit. Now for the sentiment, I'm using the stamp that says, sure do miss you. And I've placed this on an acrylic block and I'm inking it up with some red memento ink in love letters color. Now before stamping, I wanted to pull out my mouse pad. I tend to get a better impression whenever I stamp using an acrylic block on top of the mouse pad. Now that I have this stamped out, I'm going to be using a stitched banner die to cut this out and this will go at the top of my card. Now I originally intended on using this teal colored heavyweight cardstock by Recollections that I got from Michaels and this is from their Ocean collection. I planned on using this for my card base, but you'll see why I don't end up doing that here in just a moment. But what I did was I um, trimmed it down to seven inches on the longest side and then I scored it at three and a half. And um, you'll see why I don't end up using this as my card base. Look at what I just did. I glued it on upside down. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so, and I didn't even notice it until after I let it sit there and dry. So I, um, I'm now doing the same thing with my bucket that I did with my sandcastle. And I'm attaching the acetate and then the frame. And then I remembered that I needed to glue the windows on the front side of the sandcastle. Now these are little pieces, but they do add a lot of interest to this, I think. Now, if you Google the size of a slimline card, you'll get several different results. And so I decided not to let the error ruin my project. I just cut off the other side and this is gonna be my frame. And I'm gonna make my card base just a little bit bigger. So on my longest side, I cut it to eight and five eighths of an inch, and then I turned it and cut it at seven and two eighths or seven and a fourth. And it, this trimmer that I have, I kind of had a little a, a hard time finding two eighths of an inch, but once I trim that off, now I'll be able to take my scoreboard and score it at three and five eighths of an inch. I like to make sure that my edges line up, so I use the corner of my scoreboard before burnishing down the edge. Of course, I'm gonna make sure that I glue this right side up this time. When I trimmed my teal piece down earlier, some of the edges were a little frayed, so I used my sand eraser to get rid of some of those little paper flakes. Of course, now the card's a lot thicker than I had originally planned it to be, but it'll be okay. So I'm running out of glue, as you can see here. I'm struggling to get some out of my bottle, but I like to use up every little bit. Now to add the shaker pieces. I marked the corner of where I wanted to place the sandcastle with the pencil directly on my seam because it'll be covered up by the frame anyway. And I made sure that the little triangle piece was going to cover up the seam at the top where I connected the waves pattern paper. Now I carefully added the little tiny sand looking toppings that came in the kit. I added those inside of the sandcastle and I just, I love this little bowl that I have. It's in the shape of a skull, but it's got a little lip there and it allows me to just kind of spread these out like I, like I need to. I'll link this in the description box below. You just, it's definitely, if you make a lot of shaker cards, it's definitely worth the investment. Okay, so I peeled the adhesive backing off the back side of the shaker piece and attached that down. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the bucket. Now I strategically placed this bucket on top of that line where I had overlapped my sand dots earlier. The toppings that I decided to use for inside of the bucket, I chose to use the little red round glass beads and because these are round glass beads, I was having a little bit of a hard time keeping them inside my bucket. They were rolling all over my work surface here. I didn't wanna use a whole lot of them anyway because I will be making additional shaker cards, which I'll share with you later. But I just removed the uh, adhesive backing and excuse my head being in the way there, I apologize. I just wanted to make sure that I had it straight. And so now I'm attaching the handle and my shovel. Just gonna add a little bit of glue to the back here. And then I decided to use, I wanted to pop up my sentiment in the middle 
And so I took that middle foam piece from the sand castle and I just trimmed it down so that it would fit directly behind the little banner. And then I'm gonna put that in the center at the top. If you're a paper crafter and have a YouTube channel and you'd like to try to grow your subscriber base, find us on Facebook at Team Tiny. To finish off the card, I added a little sequin flower to the top left corner of the bucket and some Nouveau crystal drops in morning dew to the tops and windows of the sand castle. These drops dry clear but add a little bit of shine. And then I took my white gel pen and drew on the indentions of the shovel. And I thought it needed a little something else, so I added this pearlized starfish embellishment that I had in my stash. And I also added a little white pearl to the center of the flower on the bucket. And this finishes up my card for today. I think this turned out really cute. I'm also currently working on using up the rest of this kit to make 15 shaker cards using the card sketches from Kendra's Card Challenge 2, which I'll be posting here on my YouTube channel soon. So if you're not already a subscriber, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Don't forget about filling out the form to enter the giveaway and also make sure to leave a comment to let me know what you think of today's video and check out the other videos along the hop by clicking on the hashtag in the description box. You can also find additional card making inspiration on my Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest pages, as well as my website at cardsbykendra.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful crafty day.